I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster and today we're going to be talking about the art of analysis and how to perform it. On this channel predominantly we focus on analyzing fashion, applying cultural theory and uncovering the symbolism and the artfulness of designer clothes, but this video really applies to any kind of analysis that you want to do. Analysis is essentially just making connections between different things and thinking deeply about a specific thing, whatever that thing happens to be. I'm lucky enough that analysis gets to be my job and a lot of people hit me up in my DMs kind of wanting to know how I got to be good at this. And we'll talk a little bit later about how being good at analysis isn't really the right way to think about it. But a lot of people would like to know how I got to a position where I'm able to look at a runway show and kind of understand the artfulness and the symbolism and the references and kind of tie all that together and sort of understand what a story from that runway show might be. Like I said, other applications for this are almost infinite. You can apply good analysis tools to just about everything. I have a literature degree and when I was studying that, we got into uh, the actual theory classes, which is uh, that book right there, which is one of my favorite books to this day. In this class, there was a lot of talk about reading things as a text. And that could be, you know, anything. You're reading a garden like it is a text. You're reading a film like it is a text. You're reading anything, upholstery. So if you're not particularly into fashion, that's okay. I think this will apply to uh, literally anything that you are interested in and want to understand on a deeper level. I think I'm gonna end up turning this into a series because my own understanding of how to perform analysis is constantly evolving and changing and I'm constantly reading new things that sort of give me different ideas about the way to look at things. So this is going to be updated periodically with new videos, but um, there's not gonna be any kind of schedule for that. It's just gonna be like, when I come across something that's very new, we're gonna add it to the series, but um, yeah. For now, let's get started. Let's do the basics of analysis. Okay, two quick things before we actually get started. One, look at this. You can get like the coolest pants that you've ever owned if you just like look up like ski pants online. Used ones are even better because they cost like no money. I got these for $30, it's pretty sick. When I got them used, they were in like great condition, but I ended up like kind of screwing them up when I was mountain biking with a friend and riding through waist deep water and the pants got caught in the bike chain. Exciting, thrilling. Thing number two, if this kind of stuff is very useful for you, like if say you're watching this for the second time to pull out information from it, you should support it on Patreon. This is independent fashion, journalism. No one else does this kind of stuff and it can't exist if you don't support it. YouTube is my only source of income and you're not doing me any favors either. I mean, you get exclusive episodes, you get extended episodes like the Margella and the Rick Owens analyses. You get to join the discord where everybody else that's on the Patreon is hanging out and talking and discussing fashion. It's an incredibly tight knit group and they're all incredible people. Go join the Patreon using the link that is somewhere. Okay, let's get into analysis. We're gonna start here with something that's gonna instantly make all of your analysis three times better. It's very, very simple. Spend a lot of time with whatever it is that you're trying to analyze. There's a mental blockage that goes on when you're trying to do this. This sounds incredibly simple, but it's kind of not because it's like sport things. 95% of it is very mental. Spending a lot of time with things is difficult because everybody has incredibly short attention spans right now. I am included in this and there's constantly this fight of, yeah, I got it, let's do something else. When you go in and the thing feels impossible, I'm gonna use Dark Souls as an example because I really like Dark Souls. There is like no point with that game series where you feel like you are in good control of things. Every new area that you go into, it completely tears you up and it makes you feel like you've never done this before and that you're starting fresh from zero and you have no idea how you're actually going to make this happen. And unless you just never got good and rage quit, you slowly chip away at it and you slowly spend more time with it, you slowly wrestle the thing and eventually, even if it's still hard, and it is still hard, analysis is hard for everyone every time they do it, regardless of who they are or what their personality or brain type is. It's hard for everyone. No one is good at analysis at any point. Everyone constantly feels like they are struggling with it. But if you spend enough time with something, you eventually get to this place where you're able to understand the movement of it. You're kind of able to surf it a little bit. So let's take runway shows. Again, this is kind of my bread and butter, so we're gonna use runway shows. I made a video a while back about how I don't understand Yoji Yamamoto's work. Uh, for those who are not into fashion, this is someone who has been around for decades and he is universally revered as an incredibly good designer. But unlike other designers where I'm able to just pop into their shows and say, oh, that's a reference to this movie. Cool, I'll just watch that movie and see if any themes from that apply to the runway show. Oh, it turns out a bunch of them do, hooray. There's not really a way into Yoji's work that is 
clean and fluid and well laid out. And if y'all thought I was complaining a lot in that video about how I don't understand, imagine how my family feels. My parents, who are smart, artistic people, but do not really have a lot of inherent interest in fashion, have had to hear hours of me complaining about how I don't get it. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure how to crack the code on this. Ugh, I tried this thing today and it didn't work. And my mother, who is a very numerically analytical person, at one point stopped me and said, let me ask you something. How much time have you spent with these shows? And I was like, a lot. And she was like, no, no, no. Not like, uh, how much time have you spent pondering the problem? How much time have you just spent with the shows? And I said, probably not a lot of time just sitting there taking them in. And she said, I always see you sitting with runway shows and just taking them in. And this one, it sounds like you are so intimidated by it that maybe you're not doing what you normally do. I think you should just sit with the shows for a while and just kind of see if anything comes to mind at all. So do you see what the conflict there is? It's not even so much that the thing itself was super difficult to analyze. It was that my own baggage and intimidation and things that have to do with me were the things that were preventing me from actually spending really good quality time with the thing. We're not ever really gonna get a clean listicle here. This is not just gonna be like a clean, like one, two, three, four, now you're better at analyzing kind of thing. We're gonna kind of dive into the actual things that make analysis difficult, at least for me. So there has to be a point where you're able to recognize what inside of yourself is kind of keeping you from really spending lots of time with that thing and then pushing the baggage away and saying, let me just sit with this work for three times longer than it would be normal for me to sit with it. If you're trying to do this to a movie, you gotta watch the movie a few different times. You gotta take notes while you watch it the first time, the second time, the third time. If you're analyzing a garden, you gotta go walk around in that garden a whole bunch. You gotta take pictures, you gotta take notes, you gotta ask questions to the people who work there. I do this great exercise every couple of months with the people that follow me on Instagram where I specify that they were gonna do a specific runway show. Right now we're doing Vet Mall Fall Winter 2019 and I take three looks from it per day and I just post those to my story and say, if you notice anything in here, a reference, if it just reminds you of something, if it reminds you of something that's personal and only in your own life, message me and tell me what that is. And then I compile all of the thoughts and then I make a runway analysis video out of it. And the biggest thing that I'm trying to kind of show everybody through that is that we're not ever going to pick anything up just by scrolling through a runway show on our phones in the Vogue app. Nothing is really going to come to you like that. You really do have to take this stuff very, very slowly. And I promise you, it will be way more rewarding for you to take and closely analyze and really figure out what's going on in a handful of shows rather than to have a very baseline, shallow understanding of a hundred different shows. You have to spend a lot of time with the thing that you are analyzing. This next point is not really a tip, it's more just something that you need to keep in mind while you're doing this. A huge factor in your analysis of anything is going to be your life experience. Education in fashion is incredibly important. I do not have any kind of formalized fashion education at all. I've just been obsessed with clothes for the last eight years. In that obsession though, I was constantly seeking out information and concrete answers to questions. What is this fabric? What is this shape of dress called? Why is denim made the way that denim is made? Why are jeans blue? How do you pronounce Trump Lowell? Ugh, these earrings are killing me. Ow. Other questions. Why do designers like tools so much? What is the new look? So I've kind of gotten an education loosely through the internet, even though that's gonna be much more disorganized and probably took a whole lot longer than if I had just gone to fashion school. But anyone who does analysis for a living in the world of fashion, most of them are journalists, would say that they lean way more heavily on the tools of analysis than they do on the general pieces of information that they get about the industry or clothes themselves. Again, information is important. You have to have information in order to do this stuff correctly, but it is not the most crucial thing. All of this is just to say you are qualified to do analysis right now. And you should lean into the life experience that you've already had. Art doesn't ever happen in a vacuum. Lean into your, I'm gonna repeat it so that you actually, so we catch all this. Lean into your own life experience because that's what a lot of this stuff is coming from anyway. It's okay if you don't know off the top of your head that these vet mall pants are a reference to Eastern European prisoners pants. That's okay because you know who told me about that? someone who lives in Eastern Europe. You yourself have your own life experience that is going to reveal things about art and anything that you want to analyze that no one else will be able to uncover because they don't have your specific life experience. That stuff is as useful as having just all of the baseline knowledge about like the full history of Dior and everything else. Your eyes specifically deliver value. 
And for that matter, the people who are really good at this, like Tim Blanks and Andre Leon Talley, those were not, I mean, I love them a lot. Those were not people who just came into the world of fashion already being human thesauruses on the history of human clothing, as they both definitely are now. But most of the stuff that they've learned comes to them, and I can definitely speak from experience, it's come to me on the run. I've spent most of my time doing fashion analysis just sitting, looking for a long time, taking lots of notes, researching what I'm able to, and then honestly saying what I see. Don't try to overshoot stuff and make yourself look like you know about something that maybe you don't know about. I've done that a bunch of times. It only ends badly. You need to understand that your eyes and your experience are valuable, and if you sit and really take time and honestly say what you see, that's the sweet spot. Let's move on real quick because we do have a couple of things we need to cover. Let's talk about research real quick. I heard this once from a historian who is very well known, but whose name escapes me. She said that research is the process of strategically wasting time. And a part of analysis inevitably is going to be you learning more about the thing itself, things that you didn't know going into it that you need to know in order to fully inform yourself to make a call about the thing that you're looking at. A lot of times in fashion, this is the process of me trying to track down show notes. They're very difficult to find and there's no single way of going and getting them. But also a lot of that just has to do with me reading interviews with the designer and watching videos of people breaking down the product after they've already purchased it. When I did my analysis of Gucci Fall Winter 18, I ended up spending like a week straight just doing research because there is so much referential material in there that it was just like this endless, endless rabbit trail of uncovering more and more and more things and it was just this bottomless pit of research. And then I had the hilarious task of trying to conform the 300 tabs that I had open into 40 minutes of analysis. All this to say, when you're doing research, there needs to be some kind of limit on how far you're gonna chase down a specific thing. If you're a really naturally curious person, the research period can be a huge stopgap in you actually getting good analysis done. Because if the source material is right, there's never an end to the research. And a lot of what you're looking at won't be exactly what you need. I mean, if you're reading an interview, read the whole interview. It's gonna be relevant to what you're looking at. But if you think maybe there's a reference here to this like movie Movie, but you're not sure and you're watching the movie and you're trying to make compare it there needs to be a certain point where you can say I don't think this movie is as relevant as I once thought it was I am wasting time at this point I need to get back to the core of the research if you're just playing really fast and loose and you're just googling things based on what things remind you of maybe set a timer for yourself 10 minutes and then when the timer goes off ask yourself am I uncovering anything real here and if not maybe it's time to switch to something else and while we're talking about research, this is, this is a really big, um, for me at least, this is a big point of discouragement and a thing that often prevents me from getting good work done. If you see a specific element in a runway show, and again, my perspective is fashion, but really this applies to anything. If you see a specific element in a runway show and you feel really, really sure that that is a reference to something, but you don't know what it is, make a note of it, move on. It's really easy to get caught in this trap that the entire understanding of this show rests on a lack of knowledge that I have about something and that I don't have the ability to research. To go back to this example of these pants from the Vetmall show, this very clearly is saying something. I mean, it says made in Europe. There's a fade out on the Europe part of it. It's shaped in a really specific way. It does look like it's copying something, some other kinds of pants. If this other person had not told me that these were a reference to Eastern European prisoner pants, I would have had no way of knowing that on my own. And I very often see stuff like this and go, I don't understand what this means. I can't move on until I figure out what this thing is. So I start Googling made in Europe. Oh, there's a, okay, so that's actually a delineation of this. Well, okay, what kind of logo, what font is this? Maybe the fade out has to do with some kind of screen printing. What are different types of screen printing? Can you purposefully screen print things to look worn out? And before I realize that I have like 70 tabs open and I have learned nothing. And that drive to crack the code and connect the loosely related dots and stuff, that can be a good impulse and if you have a brain that's set up like mine, it's very satisfying to do that. It does feel like you're getting something done. But ultimately, if you try to explain that to other people, you, it, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And in this case, it would have just been 
incorrect because this is just a reference to Eastern European prisoner pants. Don't allow yourself to think that a single reference or a single thing that you don't immediately get is the only key to unlocking the entire piece of art. 98% of the time, that's not true anyway. And besides, you don't wanna just continuously be churning over and torturing yourself with this L over and over and over until you just say, fuck it, I'm just never gonna understand this thing and then you just give up. Did somebody at your school grow up in Ukraine? Ask them. People love being asked things about their personal experience. It makes them feel special. But don't allow stuff like that to just torture you and tear you up and get you discouraged. You need to move on. You need to perform the whole analysis. Okay, so let's move into the last point here. And by the way, huge props if you get this far in these videos. I mean, like a ton of people who watch YouTube videos drop off after the first like one or two minutes. So if you actually sit and watch these things all the way through, that's wonderful. I really appreciate it. Points lost if you have other tabs open or on your phone though. Too late, the points are already lost. Nah, I'm just kidding, welcome back. Okay, let's move into the last point here. Here is the goal with analysis. Ultimately, you are competing with yourself here. There is no way that I could be doing what I do right now, I'm 31. There's no possible way that I could do this stuff when I was 20 years old. And I was trying, I was getting a literature degree at the time. I really wanted to be good at the art of analysis and I was really digging into it and constantly trying to perform it with like E.E. E. Cummings poetry. But back then, I would have had no way of doing what I'm doing now. And at the same time, what I'm doing right now, I have no way of doing what Andre Leon Talley does. And that's okay. All this is, all analysis is, is an art form where you are competing with yourself. You are trying to go slightly deeper than what you've been able to do in the past. The goal here is not to be right. In, in a lot of ways, there kind of is no right with analysis. That's that is an oversimplification, but for our purposes today, we're just gonna say that there is no right when you're dealing with the art of analysis. The goal, your goal, is to go deeper than what is natural for you. You need to find a way to move past, this is dope, that is cute, this is fire emoji. Find words, find systems, find expression for what it is that you're seeing and what it is that you're experiencing when you look at the stuff. If you're constantly concerned about being right, it's going to inhibit you. Sometimes you have to be wrong with this stuff. I've been wrong lots of times. I mean, if you just like look through my comment sections, you'll see that there are plenty of times that people have been able to correct me on stuff that I was just flat wrong about. The goal, again, is to wriggle yourself a little bit deeper into your own experience of seeing the art and then express that in a way that others can understand. Thank you for joining me. Anybody who is involved in political science, anybody who's a journalist, anyone who does analysis in a scientific way, anyone who just likes to look at art a whole lot, I would really, really like to hear what you have to say about the things that we've talked about. Other forms of analysis that you find that are really helpful for you, little tips and tricks that kind of get you through really difficult to look at things. I would really love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them in comments below. I love reading very thoughtful comments. And I would really love to see some discussion between between different people talking to each other about what they have to say. So please go down, leave a comment, and then go find someone else and engage with them about their comment. I wanna see some good discussion going. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. We do this thing where we do a group analysis of runway shows together through my stories and fleets. It is a blast. It's like one of my favorite things about my entire job. And hey, if you enjoyed it and if this stuff is useful to you, join the Patreon. The benefits are many, but the number one benefit is that you are making it where this kind of stuff can stick around for the future. I love you all and I mean it. Goodbye.